हेलो अजित सर हाँ हाँ सॉरी आई डिडन नो हाउ टू द लिंक किसी नहीं आमर आमर जो चार तीन सात तीन दस दस डिजिट जो कोड था ना जमी ये डब्ल्यू ए एस तापर गोटे हाइफेन अच्छी जे एन टी जे हाइफेन जेड ई एक्स यहाँ इम्पोर्टेन्ट बाकी तो एक्स टी टी पी एस जहाँ रही मीट डट गुगुल डट कम रही रहा बै डिफल्ट सब तो लिंक टा है से जो जो एगार बारटा क्यारेक्टर रोच से इम्पोर्टेन्ट ठीक अच्छे तो विल कंटिन्यू ओके तो विल कंटिन्यू विथ द फ्रेंच रेवल्यूशन Alright. So, because of the mushrooming of the industries in the European uh, continent, and because of the imperialistic attitude of the uh, countries, European countries, especially the affluential countries like Spain, Germany, French, England, okay, France, this, this four to five countries, they had colonized the whole world during that era, hmm, around 1750s. Around hmm. 1750s to uh, 1800. All right. For example, during that era, uh, the Britishers also came to India uh, to have trade and commerce with the garb of having trade and commerce with India. And later on, they actually uh, colonized the whole continent, the, the whole subcontinent, huh? along with Pakistan here, Bangladesh there, and Sri Lanka. Okay, I mean all these areas. All right. so you see uh because of the mushrooming of the industries the gap between the rich and the poor increased a lot in europe right and as the result uh people started unionizing themselves against this capitalist forces or the factory owners or the capitalists all right uh to be precise in the in the marxist terminology all right so Uh, people started unionizing themselves and also they started uh, asserting themselves asserting their rights asserting their uh, fundamental rights economic rights social rights all right political rights so this this concepts of liberty equality fraternity these are by the way democratic concepts these concepts originated from the french revolution all right and as you know as i had already told you French Revolution is just a reaction against the uh, atrocities, uh, suppression, and oppression uh, that were caused by the Industrial Revolution. All right. Okay. So people like uh, I would like to name uh, people like uh, Rousseau, right? People like <coughs> Rousseau. They uh, they were the uh, precursors of this french revolution all right and these people uh, ensured that liberty equality fraternity they were realized and asserted by people in general hmm. <clears throat> common people in general all right so the i mean this causes of this revolution french revolutions are generally agreed to be a combination of social political and economic factors which the existing regime proved unable to manage so in may 1789 widespread social distress led to the convocation of the estates general hmm, and which was converted into a national assembly in june and the assembly passed a series of radical measures including the abolition of feudalism so what do you mean by a feudalism by the way hmm what do you mean by feudalism F E U <clears throat> hmm. I have uh, written the word in the chat box F E U D A L I S M feudalism Okay we have words like F E A uh, F E U D as feuds right feud as well right so feudalism is a concept uh where you see a large portion of the land or the economy is controlled by a person one person or a group of people like kings like zamindars 
hmm like local zamindars right uh so these people used to tax a lot land tax okay or agricultural tax right and this particular feudalism was widespread in russia and that's why russian revolution took place in 1917 by the way 1917 right to uh to have a reaction against this feudalism or this tsar system tsars used to be the kings by the way kings in russia they used to behave like feuds hmm they used to have all the i mean lands and all eh, economic uh, power political power social power everything they used to have and they used to uh exploit common people by the way hmm by taking a large portion of uh tax from them hmm so uh people started <coughs> revolutionizing protesting uh, against these kinds of uh exploitation hmm in russia right uh under the leadership of lenin and uh, later on kremlin and all hmm so uh the tsar system or the feud system or the feudalism was abolished through russian revolution in 1917 so we are coming back to 20th century by the way and this particular revolution that we are talking about french revolution is uh, uh from the 18th century the last part of the 18th century hmm okay so this is known as the feudalism concept all right so we will again go back to the french revolution all right and <clears throat> hmm and you see uh in europe most of the things was controlled by the church because church or catholic church used to have control over almost everything kingship hmm political social administration economic administration every kind of thing because god was considered to be everything king. right ha huh, yes someone wanted to say something hmm yes arati go oh. sir i by mistakenly unmuted myself oh okay, okay all right so you see that is why uh, even in democracy <clears throat> the fundamental principle of democracy is what vox populi vox the okay so in french the means what god uh, so this is the i mean fundamental principle you see vox populi vox the okay this is in french hmm voice of the people is voice of god hmm voice of the people is voice of god in french and the meaning in english is voice of the people is voice of god okay because at the point of time god used to be everything so so during that period voice of the king used to be the voice of the god okay but french revolution turned everything upside down okay so from the hands of kings or the from the hands of god the powers have been shifted to the hands of the common people that is why democracy is considered to be the one of the best forms of government or or administration or governance okay you see also you have many people uh, for example abraham lincoln hmm, uh one of the presidents former presidents of usa uh, who has defined democracy as concept of what democracy is for the people of the people and by the people the meaning of which is yes uh, the meaning of which is democracy is managed by people and this is meant for people okay and this is made of people in a way made for people made of people okay meant for people and be be all and end all for common people according to abraham lincoln right and this democratic form of government originated from this french revolution okay why are we talking about this by the way because 
this particular revolution, French Revolution, has impacted or has influenced English literature or the Romantic age. Hmm. That is why we are talking about this French Revolution. All right. Okay. Again, <clears throat> uh, come back to uh, French Revolution. So at that point of time, uh, uh, Louis X, uh, XIV was there as the king of uh, France. Uh, XVI was there, uh, not XIV. XVI was there. Or Louis the Sixteenth, we can say. Louis the Sixteenth was uh, the king of France at that point of time when this French Revolution broke out in France. And this actually broke out in uh, France, although uh, at the same time, it impacted or influenced the whole of Europe. So it was not confined to only one country, that is France. Rather, it influenced the whole of Europe, all these countries in Europe, uh, and later on, the whole world. Hmm. OK, so this particular revolution was followed by 1792 <coughs> execution, execution of Louis XVI. In June, an uprising in Paris replaced the, the Girondins who dominated the National Assembly with the Committee of Public Safety, headed by Maximilian uh, Robespierre. Mm. And this sparked the reign of terror, an attempt to eradicate alleged counter-revolutionaries by the time it ended in July 1794. Over 16,600 had been executed in Paris and the provinces, as well as external enemies the Republic faced a series of internal royalist and Jacobian uh, revolts. In order to deal with this, the French Directory took power in November 1795. Despite a series of military victories, the war caused economic stagnation and political divisions. In November 1799, the Directory was replaced by the Consulate, which is generally seen as the end of the revolutionary period. Hmm. Okay, then what were the causes of this revolution, by the way? <clears throat> so the underlying causes of this French Revolution are generally seen as arising from the failure of the ancient regime to manage social and economic inequality. All right, as I told you, because of the French Revolution, is because of the Industrial Revolution, people had started discriminating amongst themselves. Hmm. There was a division in the society between the higher class, middle class, among the higher class, middle class, and the lower class. Okay. And uh, in order to bridge the gap, in order to <clears throat> minimize the gap between the rich and the poor, hmm, this revolution, this French Revolution took place, as I already told you. Hmm. And this rapid population growth, because of the, Fra because of the Industrial Revolution, in the, in the cities uh, and the inability to adequately finance government debt resulted in economic depression, unemployment, and high food prices. Okay, so these were the social causes. Hmm. So, so, social and economic causes. Hmm. So, economic depression was there because the government was in debt, financial debt, DBT debt. Uh, unemployment was there, and high inflation was the inflation of food prices. Because of this socio-economic uh, causes, uh, the French Revolution broke out. Hmm. And it was combined with the regressive tax system by the government and resistance to reform by the ruling elite. It resulted in a crisis. That is, Louis XVI proved unable to manage, unable to handle. So at the point of time, King Louis XVI was there in the throne of uh, France and he was unable to manage this social economic depression. At the same time, discussion of these issues and political dissent had become part of wider European society rather than confined to a small elite. Hmm. Right? Tikka me lighter note kya sama? Tikka serious eagle amor talk ta? Nain? Acha. बर्तमान जो दी बर्तमान जो दी हमें पॉलिटिकल सिनेरियो भी सरे कथा बाता हवा ताहले अनइम्प्लॉयमेंट रेट बढ़ी चीना कम ही ची इक्के डिस्कस कर दो बात दो मिनट तापर पुनी हमें टॉपिक को आसीबा पापुलेशन हिसाब से सर रेट बहुत कम हो ची 
रेट बहुत कम अच्छी यस सर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू तो अलगा अलगा रहो छे सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयड भी आजकल बहुत सारा असलेनी बट एजुकेशन एंड पॉपुलेशन हिसाब रे रेट कम अच्छे सर पॉपुलेशन हिसाब रे एजुकेशन हिसाब रे रेट कम होची कार फूड माने फूड अच्छी सर एबर टाइम रे रेट कम अच्छे सर सत्र एबर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सर अच्छा योर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ओके निर्लिप्त ओझा निर्लिप्त ना निर्लिप्तता यस अरे अच्छा नहीं हाँ निर्लिप्तता ऑल राइट तो मैं को सर रेट तो बॉडी ची बॉडी ची ओके सर अनइंप्लॉयमेंट बॉडी ची ना कमी ची सर मॉव पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू रे ऑन अनइंप्लॉयमेंट तो बॉडी ची बॉडी ची यस सुष्मिता Susmita, hello, hello. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Hmm. According to your opinion, inflation has risen up or inflation have dipped down? Ah. <clears throat> sir. Inflation has risen up or it has dipped down. Inflation will be bigger today. इन्फ्लेशन कहिले बुझी पर जो तो सर ये कहबे अच्छा इन्फ्लेशन कहिले तो दर दाम जो बढी जाए बहुत जोर रे राइट हम जिनस पत्र रो हां सर आको कहा जे इन्फ्लेशन इकोनॉमिक इन्फ्लेशन हम यस राइज अप हेच यस बॉडी जी ओके हम शुभम शुभम साहू यस सर हम सर इन्फ्लेशन तो बहुत विगर रेट सर बढ़ी ची इवन कोरोना परे कोरोना आगुरु ठीक ठीक थे लागु डे हिसाब रे किंतु कोरोना परे जो बढ़िया अंडर डेवलपमेंट आवर जेंडी जॉब लॉस है जी जेंडी पापुलेशन तो जेंडी आगुरु थीला से रेटर बढ़ो जी मतलब जो हिसाब रे हमरो इन्फ्लेशन तो थीला एबर मैंने ग्रोथ � ओके आह वी हैव जागिया से नहीं मिश्रा जागिया से नहीं मिश्रा यस सर हाँ तो मोहित साबरे सर बॉडी जी बॉडी जी ओके अभिनाश बेहरा अभिनाश आयु दे हेलो अविनाश परहैप्स ही इज नॉट देयर पूजा पूजा बेहरा यस सर हम्म हम्म सर वहाँ पर तो मैं आई वुड आई वुड नॉट एबल टू से समथिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ कोविड एंड केबर but my opinion inflation is increased today by the hmm okay okay all right so you see this particular thing happened in france around 1780s hmm when the king was not able to tackle the situation this economic crisis hmm when food inflation will be high unemployment will be high then you see there will be a definitely a sort of discrimination between the rich and the poor, right? The poor may not be able to uh, cope up with this kind of a situation, but the middle class or the capitalist class will definitely cope up with this kind of situation because they have money, right? So because of the industrial revolution, you see, the uh, capitalist people used to enjoy the, the fruits of the industrial revolution. On the other hand, you see, we have the, the common proletariat people who used to uh, suffer a lot because of this crisis, economic crisis. All right, and this led uh, led uh, the uh, this laid the foundation of uh, the French Revolution and later on the Romanticism as a movement in literature. Hmm. So these are socio-economic. Uh, 
revolutions, by the way, what we are talking about now. Huh? This French Revolution is a political revolution, is a social economic revolution in a way. Hmm. And this industrial revolution was purely an economic revolution. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you see, uh, <clears throat> hmm. again, coming down, uh, coming back to your topic, that is French Revolution. So you see, <clears throat> these were the causes of uh, the French Revolution. Causes were like economic depression, unemployment, and high food prices or inflation. And also another one is regressive tax system. Regressive tax system by the king mm. or by the administration, we can say, political administration. Mm. All right. So, with this uh, revolution, a new constitution was created mm, there in France. And this was assisted by Thomas Jefferson. Mm. And uh, Lafayette prepared a draft constitution known as the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, which echoed some of the provisions of the Declaration of Independence. However, France had reached no consensus on the role of the crown. And until this question was settled, it was impossible to create political institutions. When presented to the Legislative Committee on 11 July, it was rejected by pragmatists such as Jean-Joseph Mounier, President of the Assembly, who feared creating expectations that could not be satisfied. Hmm. And <clears throat> you see, uh, at that point of time, even the king was under the dominance of the church or the Catholic church especially. And you must be knowing this fact that Catholic Church or Catholicism sect of Christianity is one of the traditional sects of religions, okay, of all the religions. Hmm. So this Catholicism is quite traditional, quite orthodox, and you see, quite uh, rigorous to follow. Hmm. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so this uh, Catholicism sect of Christianity is one of the most traditional kind of uh, sects in all the religions. All right. Okay. So even the king was under the dominance of the church. And when this revolution took place, even this revolution was against the traditional religious system of Europe. And mostly in Europe, <coughs> Christianity was prevalent at that point of time as well, now also. Mm. Okay, and that's why there was, uh, there was political division among people. So some people used to uh, support the uh, parties that supported democratic form of government. And there were some people which uh, who used to uh, support the monarchic form of government or the government of monarchy or king or uh, king supported by the church. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this political division created uh, unrest in France at that point of time and monarchy finally fell down. Okay. Monarchy means the rule of the king fell down. All right, it was completely abolished and this new democratic form of government in France uh, <clears throat> started exercising its power mm. there by forming political government. So the first republic was uh, <clears throat> declared in 1792 uh, to 1795 in France. And first of all, when <clears throat> the Girondins took the throne. They were, they were, there, there, was, there was a political crisis, and this Girondins also uh, uh, fell. I mean, the reign of this Girondins uh, was over, overtaken by uh, the reign of terror, terror, and this terror was, uh, this terror was being orchestrated by uh, the 
Philippe egalit, uh, egalit kind of group. Oh. Then we have uh, the directory of 1795 to 1799. And there was a French uh, colonial uh, policy and this French colonial uh, policy uh, emphasized on the colonial nature of uh, the, uh, uh, the Britishers, the Germans, the uh, the other Europeans in general, and also the French in particular. Mm. Okay, you see here, <clears throat> another thing that can be emphasized here is the role of women. Initially, the role of women was quite confined mm. uh, in the Western world. Now, the role of women was extended, not confined, right? And from this part, you can see that the feminism that uh, originated uh, just after 1860s and uh, 1870s, that root of feminism can be traced back to French Revolution, 1790, uh, 1789 and afterwards. Hmm. So, uh, for example, later on, feminisms, uh, feminists like Simone de Beauvoir hmm, in around 1860s and all, uh, they started uh, emphasizing their rights. Hmm. Uh, so, these kinds of feminisms also later on uh, started uh, and also they went into the 21st, uh, 21st century and 20th century. Hmm. Okay. Okay, then we can also talk about the publication of the lyrical ballads. Hmm. So this is all about French Revolution in a nutshell. And now we will have a look at uh, lyrical ballads. Hmm. Okay, so you see, this particular uh, ballads, this group of ballads, these ballads are a group of poems, hmm. lyrical ballads, and this lyrical ballads is a group of poems, and this was uh, jointly published by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. All right, this was jointly published by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Hmm. Uh, and both of them were friends, by the way, William Wordsworth and uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. They jointly published lyrical ballads. And uh, on the one hand, William Wordsworth is considered to be a nature poet, hmm. while Samuel Taylor Coleridge is considered to be uh, a romantic poet, but not a natural poet hmm. or a nature poet. And if you, uh, if you might. You, if you uh, read about this particular poem, Kubla Khan, written by Taylor, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, you will get to know about a feeling that uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge is talking about an imaginative Kubla Khan. What the point? This Kubla Khan hmm, is an imaginative construction of Samuel Taylor Coleridge. And he, he himself has admitted that he had taken an opium Okay, before before uh, he <clears throat> wrote this particular uh, poem, by the way. Mm. So here you see in, in lyrical ballads, you will find out a collection of poems and these poems are simpler in nature. One of the most important features of these poems or this lyrical ballads mm, is that they are simpler in nature. 
right? The language is quite simple. The themes or the subject matter, they are quite simple, okay? And here in the in the preface to the lyrical ballads, in the preface, <clears throat> so preface is a critical critical piece hmm, or critical introduction to lyrical ballads. Okay, and the preface was written uh, individually by William Wordsworth twice: preface to first edition, preface to second edition. All right. So the first edition, in the first and second edition, you see, you will find out that. On the preface, you will find out that the nature of the poet. First, the definition of the definition of poems. This was there. Then the mm, the definition of a poet. Hmm. Subject matter of poetry. All right. And language or diction of poems. Hmm. Uh, so here, I mean, in preface, you will find out about these things. So the definition of poems has been uh, mentioned there, has been defined there in a uh, vivid way. The definition of a poet is there, subject matter of poetry is there, and also the language or diction of poetry. Hmm. What should be the language or, or what should be the diction of a poem? Hmm. That has been also outlined. Hmm. So these four things, four broad things uh, have been outlined there in the preface to the lyrical ballads. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, now we will have a a, a short slide. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if we talk about this uh, lyrical ballads, you will find out that William Wordsworth is talking about the theory of poetry. Hmm. Because uh, he has defined poetry, and he he says that, <clears throat> as I had already told you in the very first class, that the definition of poetry is that it is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and emotions, as recollected in tranquility. So, I am writing here uh, in your in your chat box. Hmm. Poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and emotions as recollected in tranquility. Oh, so here, we just mark these words. Hmm. Spontaneity, right? Spontaneity one overflow two powerful three. Hmm. Sir, what does it mean by tranquility? Yeah, I am just defining it, huh? And emotions. All right. And the last one is tranquility as uh, arati has said right arati you said 
Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So here you have this these words. Mark these words. Spontaneity one. Spontaneous spontaneity means naturalness or automatically um, it it or uh, it comes to your mind. Uh, the feeling or emotion comes to your mind. Right? Overflow. Overflow means when these feelings and emotions are uh, plentifully available, right? Or adequately available to you, then they will definitely overflow. Right? Then these feelings and emotions are powerful in nature. Hmm. These are not common, I mean, common or powerless kind of things. They, these emotions and feelings are quite powerful. That is why they dominate your mind, right? Or you are obsessed with these kinds of feelings and emotions, right? When do these feelings and emotions come to your mind? When you are in a peaceful state of mind. Tranquility means peacefulness, okay? So when... Your mind is quite at peace. Okay, when you are relaxing at that point of time, these feelings and emotions that are powerful in nature, they come to your mind automatically, naturally, and they overflow in your mind. That's why you become obsessed with these feelings and emotions and you try to write something, right? Have you been writing? Acha, I would like to know about your educational qualifications. So, after your BA, uh, after your which course you are here? Hello. Sir, ma, I have completed my intermediate and then I pursued the English graduation from regular course in regular mode uh, for three months. Sir. Okay. But then I shifted to shifted my career in uh, nursing. nursing. Uh, but now I'm working as an uh, postal employee, so mm -hmm. I'm doing this um, through you know, distance. Oh, now. all right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, Susmita. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, I have completed plus two then DLS. Then I joined in Igno. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have Suham. So twelfth. Twelfth. Okay. Yeah, guess any? Sir, I have completed twelfth. Then I join MDLED. Mm -hmm. uh, then. I'll do English. Okay. All right. Because we did not have a formal introduction. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Rajkumari Kundu? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Rajkumari? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From Puri. Were you here? Were you listening to me when I asked you the question? Uh, yes, sir. Introduction. Yeah, yeah. Rajkumari Kundu. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I asked you about your educational qualification after. I mean, education, before this, after plus, after uh -huh. plus two, many years gave, okay. some years gave, mm -hmm. then I joined plus three. All right, all right. Okay. Pooja. I have mm -hmm. completed last year, then I completed third year. Then I joined Ignore. Okay. Just me, just me, Mani, just me, Mani, Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am completed diploma. Diploma, diploma. Which course? Diploma in? Yes. Rajkumari, you can mute yourself. Hmm. Yes, just me, Mani. Just me. Are you there?
कैन यू लिसन टू मी हेलो परहैप्स देर इज अ नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम सर आई थिंक देयर इज अ नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम सो दैट कैन नॉट हियर नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम राइट पूजा यस सर आई थिंक सो हम्म हम्म कैन यू हियर मी जस्मी मानी हैज लेफ्ट ओके All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. So we were discussing we were discussing about poetry. Ha, huh, poetry. The definition of poetry. The definition of poetry. Okay. And the definition is that poetry. A poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and emotions, as recollected in tranquility. Hmm. So the first feature is spontaneity, hmm. overflowing of, and the second one is overflow, hmm. overflowing of what? Powerful feelings and emotions, right? And they come to your mind when your mind is in tranquility or in a peaceful state of mind. All right. So if you if you talk about the one of the features of romanticism, that is. Extremely sorry, sir. <laughs> no, no problem. Okay, mm, no issues. Mm, all right. So you see, if you talk about one of the features of romanticism, that is, lyricism or subjectivity. Mm, so subjectivity is there, right? When we talk about subjectivity, these definition, emotions are personal, right? Subjective. these feelings and emotions are individual to you personal to you right okay so the very definition of poetry given by william wordsworth is subjective in nature and subjectivity is one of the characteristic features of romanticism all right okay then we have you see <clears throat> the poet should be portrayed as an ordinary man endowed with an exceptional sensibility and enthusiasm for nature okay so the a poet is according to william wordsworth a poet is a man is a or is an ordinary man writing for an ordinary man got the point okay all right the poet is different from a common man in the sense that he has some kind of exceptional sensibility and enthusiasm for nature bujh ballo bujh ballo ha a poet is also a common man but he is to some extent different from a lay person or a common man or the common man right and how that person i mean a poet has some degree of higher seriousness got the point so a poet is a poet who is different from a common man because he has some high degree of sensibility okay what do you mean by sensibility by the way exceptional sensibility so your sensibility uh, i i think that sensibility is what we see in the nature what we feel about that uh, mm. from the very basic touch yes yeah arati is also right but when we talk about this sensibility this sensibility is all about uh, uh the emotions of empathy and sympathy okay this is in particular he has said hmm. so for example when a dog is suffering from anything right when a dog is feeling hungry you see you have seen that dog right will you be able to resist your heart hmm no sir no okay that is sympathy s y m p a t h y right what is empathy then the action we take that mm -hmm. yes 
that when we give him some bread or some biscuits uh, that is the action we take and that is the empathy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when you try to identify with the character of dog that is empathy sympathy is yes i mean you are feeling kind hearted for the dog right you are pitying on that dog on the situation of the dog that is sympathy that's fine okay you see huh uh, somebody is trying to say something banishri i think ko ko ki ki kahele ha banishri muni yes banishri you want to say something you want to ask question i was trying to say it's it's the ability to imagine how the other one is feeling mm -hmm. yeah that's what okay that's what i'm saying hmm. you see you try to imagine in their in their situation okay and accordingly you try to react okay that is empathy so for example when a dog is feeling hungry you try to place yourself in the dog situation okay and accordingly you try to have that feeling and emotion for that being okay that is empathy so there is a difference between sympathy and empathy right so these kinds of sensibilities are there in a poet and the degree of the presence of these kinds of sensibilities or sensitivities hmm towards others is more than a common man that's why a common man is a common man and a poet is an ordinary man a common man but the degree of the seriousness the degree of the sensibilities the degree of enthusiasm for nature okay those degrees are much more there in the poet than in a common man so in that respect a poet is a different person from a common man got the point so he he has outlined the differences between a common man and a poet in preface to lyrical ballads all right so the degree of sensibility is there and also the enthusiasm for nature because he was a nature poet william wordsworth that is why he has outlined he has included uh the Uh, enthusiasm for nature hmm, as one of the characteristic features of a poet okay so a poet has a higher degree of enthusiasm for nature and also sensibilities or sensitivities towards others okay all right so uh, uh, so you see again he has talked about Uh, the poet being speaking to men so the poet is a man who has been speaking to men through his poems for the point he has to use a language as i had already told you really used by men to be a prophet and to talk about a low rustic life that is less under the influence of social vanity what what do you mean by vanity by the way vanity will kind of bujh jo vanity means what <clears throat> hmm yes vanity v a n i t y by the way no sir no idea vanity okay vanity is all about the sophistication of the aristocratic people okay एरिस्टोक्रेटिक पीपल मैंने कथा बार्ता लगस देर इज अ सोफिस्टिकेशन सो फार एस देर बिहेवियर इज कंसर्न सो सो आई कैन स्पीक इन संबलपुरी आई कैन स्पीक इन ओडिया आई कैन स्पीक इन हिंदी आई कैन स्पीक इन इंग्लिश एज वेल सम टिटबिट्स ऑफ फ्रेंच एज वेल ओके सम टिटबिट्स ऑफ भोजपुरी अवधि उर्दू एज वेल और संस्कृत एज वेल ओके सो विच एवर लैंग्वेज यू आर कंफर्टेबल विथ वी कैन टॉक इन दैट लैंग्वेज और राइट मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर ओरिया स्पीकर इज इज देर एनी संबलपुरी स्पीकर हियर नो 
तो सर नो सर बट सम वे नो ओके सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड यस सर आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड संबलपुर कंप्लीटली बट आई कैन स्पीक एनीथिंग अबाउट इट ओके आरती अंडरस्टैंड्स कम कंप्लीटली संबलपुरी ऑल राइट ओके ऑल राइट सो uh no problem so i we will be using odia here because uh, all of you are odia speakers so we'll be maja maja re mu sambalpuri bitik ke use kar do thile na seti pai mu pachcha do so uh, from next class onwards we'll keep in mind that since most of you are odia speakers we'll be using odia language or english all of you are comfortable with english right yes sir yes sir from next class onwards we'll be having ppts and also i'll be sharing with you handouts so we will wind up here hmm all right do you have any questions do you have any questions yes sir um hmm. actually at that point i was uh, there were a network problem so i could mm -hmm. not hear the assembly uh, during the louis 16 mm -hmm. that ha happened in june so can you please uh, repeat that phase that phase you see louis 16th hmm he was actually <clears throat> overthrown by this protesters there were some parties political parties hmm they were protesting against louis uh, 16th because of his mismanagement all right so uh, around 1792 in june mm, because this revolution continued for i mean around 4 uh, to 5 years mm, from 1789 to 90 to 95 till 1905 uh. so uh, even just after 92 this was in a way in a way uh, sorted out but till 1795 this particular um, revolution uh, continued so in june he was completely overthrown and some political parties came to the throne of uh, france okay that's what i told you during that time okay yes any other question theek achi तापर नेक्स्ट क्लास के भी अच्छे हमारो कोडियर अच्छी बोले हम्म अगेन हम्म हम्म ओके अजित सर हाँ सर ये ये पिलांग करो वांजी राइट क्लास थी लगी ये पचल ले तुम्हारो वांजी राइट सर ये भी नेपाल कॉलेज थे सर बीबीसी सर वेट कर जन्दी सही लिंक रे जन करो सर गोटे रिक्वेस्ट थी ला सर काइंडली हमारो गोटे व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप है परिय अच्छा चलो से वेट कर जन देबे करियो को जन चैट बॉक्स रे लिंक सेंड कर देना भलो होंदा हां को सही लिंक ता मु पठे दो जीरो गोटे मिनट और चैट बॉक्स रे लिंक ता शेयर कर दियंतु से थ्रू से माने पिला माने समस्त पढेबे हां मु पठे दो जी लिंक चैट बॉक्स रे अच्छा सही ताकर पूर्णा लिंक जोडा छ सही थ्रू भी जॉइन कर करी हां हां पूर्णा लिंक माने मु जो फर्स्ट क्लास करथली ना 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 ए पिलांग कर जो लिंक रे 4 पीएम रो क्लास रे हम जॉइन करथु सर अच्छा अच्छा हां सही लिंक रे जॉइन करले सही सही रे लिंक रे जॉइन करो आ गया ठीक अछि ताहेले मु सो आई एम साइनिंग ऑफ फ्रॉम यू हां सर थैंक यू बहुत वेरी मच हां थैंक यू सर ऑलराइट हेलो 
हेलो फ्रेंड्स सर गोटे खाली कह चाहिए मुझे मो नंबर टाइम दे दीजिए प्लीज समस्त मत मेसेज कर दिखाई मुझे ग्रुप क्रिएट कर दे ओके 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 नंबर तो प्लीज आउट थे दे देगी ये चैट बॉक्स से देखो चैट बॉक्स रहा ची नंबर तो इधर लिंक तम्मू पढ़ाओ जी इधर जान करियो सही पुराना लिंक तो अच्छी तम्बाग रे इधर अगेन सर इधर कॉपी करी जी लिंक करो यस सर यस फैसे पिलांग कॉल इसे आस्तु जी जान कर दूँ जान करो जन तो सिपिला है बे हम्म कॉल दे तो पिलास ही ले जान कर लेंगे। हम्म कर देंगे जब तुम जब तुम डिसाइड करें। Thank mm -hmm. you. 